Yeah, I think they're gonna have to be really careful about those cooldowns. Her T saying that as well too. That's probably where the Ember Spirit pick was rising in prop in uh popularity for them. They just want something that's gonna be able to fight all the time fast. But I think if they mess up even like a couple of these early exorcisms, the map could close so fast and then yeah, like you said, we could just have a TB constantly trying to split push and get farm. So let's see how it goes. Because this is this looks like a very tundra esque draft. Yeah, they kind of got everything that they, they wanted in some capacity at the very least. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, again, for the TI winners, this one, a pretty big match entity as well. Uh, there's been a lot of, like, you know, him and Han over what exactly it's going to mean. It's really important. Just win the game. Make sure that you're in a good position. Don't want to get relegated by some insane math for entity and yeah. for Tundra. Uh, definitely one of those where they want to keep that major hopes, uh, keeping it going. Um, but you can see already a little bit of a pause, waiting to hear what's going to happen as uh, Toby playing on that Death Prophet, Katomi, uh, going to be paired together with him. So a pretty strong lane in a lot of ways. How do you, how do you think it deals with this CK silencer, though? I don't know how much how much pressure they're going to be able to apply onto CK. I think CK, we've seen Skeeter time and time again, even versus like stronger pressure lanes. He somehow just always finds his farm, so... Don't I think Toby guys, should find his farm, up. but I don't think they're going to slow down Skeeter. Skitter. I keep saying Skeeter, and I make you say Skeeter, and I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay. Skitter. All right. Skitter. I'm going to say it right today, because I say it wrong every single day. You know, I think he likes it both ways, if okay. I'm going to be honest with you. Well, I guess maybe we'll ask him, because I literally say <laughs> Skeeter every time, and I feel like a total idiot, so... <laughs> Gotta cut that out. And a little bit of a change-up, though. The only thing that I think looks different on Tundra Draft is the Silencer. I think right. usually you'd be like, this would be a Marana or something like that for snaking, so this one... It's a bit of a different hero for snaking. I'm sure we're still going to see him farm. He's going to probably buy Veil, because he's been buying Veil on all of his five positions. But right. yeah, that's um, the only big difference I see in their draft compared to usual. You know what's interesting? He actually started streaming right before his games today. So he played a couple of pubs before he went into it. I saw Phoenix in there, or Rubik. It's like, how, how before an official are you confident enough that you're going to go play a game where you might just get tilted out of this world? That's awesome. Yeah, seriously. Uh, Soxa actually gets the rune steal. He gets it under Fishman. This Ricky plus Visage lane. Let's see if they can endure the pressure of this one too, because eyes on this uh, eyes on this bottom lane. It's always going to be the Soul Assumption spam versus squishier heroes. Let's see if Fishman can keep his Watson nice and healthy. Right, Watson has uh, sort of had an up and down season. I feel like uh, definitely been struggling every now and then as Stormstorm are trying to push nine back a bit. Uh, but has that shield crash damage reduction going in there. Um, but yeah, playing now on this Terrorblade, I feel like this is one of the heroes that people sort of knew him for beforehand and yeah. when he was rising to prominence. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of his best. Just yeah, The hero can definitely have its faults. If you get pressure too hard in laning phase, you're always just constantly in recovery mode. So yeah, let's see how it goes. This Fishman Ooh. might just die bottom here. The body block's coming in. A couple more punches. The soul assumption and 33 drawing first blood, taking him down. Oh, and Watson can't even get the trade there. Wants to make sure he can get last hits. 33 does drop very low because of that, but yeah, they get them. They always get, I feel like they always get first blood with these type of lanes whenever they have 33 visage. Dude, and look at his, what he's bringing out. A set of tangos, two mangoes, and a sow. Yep. So like, they're they're playing to really try and trade constantly and shut down Watson if possible. Yeah, it's a constant spam lane. Eventually he'll probably bring up ba uh, Bassy next so they can keep the Ricky and him constantly at full mana. But yeah, it's all about just nuking these squishier heroes. Courier's going down. Yeah, kill on a couple there. Can tell me find snakings. I think he got the tree throw on some snakings there when it delivered. We're seeing here too the the smoke screen just getting dropped down by Soxa on top of the Terra Blade. I think he's just doing that to try and get him to miss last hits. Yeah, I, this this ability is ridiculous. There's a reason why. Besides all the other crazy buffs that Ricky's gotten, including that absurd shard that I know everybody is super frustrated with always. <laughs> um, Smokescreen's massive. The level one of it, it's all of the same radius. It's super obnoxious to lane against. Can I just say how funny it is? We were talking about how Snaking never plays Silencer, and he's like, hotkeys, sorry, I gotta change things up a little bit. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it, the, the switch up there is great. I love that. Yep. No, 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 no. As Stormstormer getting a couple denies there in Nine's face, forcing him back. That's why they went for this pick. He knows he's gonna have a pretty damn good lane. My God, the pauses. Yeah, just, you know, taking a moment every now and then, a couple smiles you can see on the face there of Katomi. Uh, some team speak issues as well as they try and sort out their issues. Uh, but yeah, two minutes in, and already you can see both of the safe laners kind of being hampered a little bit. Yeah, a bit, bit disrupted for sure. 
I, I think all both of them have the exact same amount of creeps coming into them as well too, so it should be pretty even on them. And a couple of extra denies there for uh, the terrible. <laughs> oh my goodness! An instant repause. Dude, what? It, it. I guess they're just getting DC'd. Okay. Weird. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully they can resolve that. So Barya, dead, kind of dead even lanes. I think top Toby is actually. Toby's the one that's going to struggle, it feels like. We see the Visage having the exact same uh, concern, but he already used the Spirit Siphon very early on and it actually got broken immediately. So I think they could actually get aggressive onto this Death Prophet pretty soon up top with Snaking and Skeeter. Skeeter. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, it, what I'm I, writing it down. I, I, I think it's one of those things to me where, like, so many people call him Skeeter, too. Like, to his face. It's like it's a nickname almost at this point. I, yeah, I've, I've literally been casting him since he was on the Penta days, him and Nine. Dude, when he bought Radiance every single game. Radiance, Viper, and stuff, like every game. And he, that, that, that's where the, that's actually where he was Skeeter. Yeah. He's, a, he's grown up, and now he's become Skeeter. So. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. Has the triple branches into the wand, just maximum amount of stats possible. Yeah. And we, I think he's, he switches it up sometimes where he does go for those like mass mangoes. Right. This hero has built-in innate uh, regen right, with the Chaos Strike. And I think Snaking is just going to feed him mangoes. CK is one of those heroes that, of course, needs lots of mana. But, yeah, he's, he's going to be able to have his own sustain from built-in Chaos Strike. Does need to level that one up now. See if he goes for the 1-1-1 one, one, one build. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, a couple of sort of interesting things to watch for here over uh, the next couple of minutes as they're trying to sort out what it is that the problem is. Yeah. Um, but regardless... Uh, I, I think at least the thing that I want to watch for is, again, these cooldowns versus the low cooldowns. Yes. Uh, you got Metamorphosis. You've got Exorcism. Those are the main ones that it feels like they have to play around. And I remember the match that we saw earlier today. It was the Nigma game where they went, like, all out, super fast-paced aggression that they were running at people with. And it felt like there was a way that... They kept on getting, like, picked off underneath that timing, where, like, if they can find, like, one pick off when all the ultis are up, they have to wait a couple more seconds mm -hmm. and try and delay out the game. And it feels like that's probably going to be Tundra's goal in this one. Yeah, I'd imagine so. I, I, the, I think the big thing to watch is just, is Stormstormer going to be able to survive and endure these clouds, these globals, and stuff like that, too? Because I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to trip him up definitely some of the times. Maybe even Watson, too. You know, he tries to get a Sunder off, a global comes out, catches him. So, right. yeah, we'll have to see if they can... Uh oh. Uh oh. Server's been <laughs> shut down. Server. I when I saw that at first, I thought that it was a voice line. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell anymore because they also. I think they had one before. Oh no. That said, he disconnected. I, I've, I've been seeing people spam that voice line too. Oh, the smile. You gotta love the smile. <laughs> Hard mode without team speak. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. Storm Stormer always got a smile on his face. Look at him. It's true. Little is a smirk. Yeah. In all things. Not hearing skitter. Sounds good. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> He's having a little bit of uh, self flame there on the team. You love to see it. Yeah, Fishman even giving a smile there. Yeah. Skate or not. He's like, yeah, not funny, man. He's like, get out of here. Unbelievable. I, I have been seeing, too, the you do Veswan uh, line get used a little bit more often now. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds insane. When they, I hear it. It's that one in the Heat Disconnected, right? It's both of theirs. Okay. Yeah, they're both really funny ones. <laughs> Some good memes in there. Yeah. My God. Yeah, well, as it happens sometimes, you know, a couple of issues. Never fear, everybody, though. Funny Dota 2 powers. is going to continue with full ability to hear everybody in spite of what 33 said in all chat. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, he's smiling, so I feel like they can hear him now, surely. Oh, my God. I haven't heard that one in a while. Yeah. That's nice planned to win, sense. baby. That's a good one. I think that's from uh, the guilds Bo right now, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so, yeah. That's a good one. Have you been Have you been doing guild quests that much? Uh, don't tell my guild, no. <laughs> okay. I was for some time. I've been on a little hiatus of the Dota. I have too much to watch. So that's fair. I haven't been playing as much as usual. To me, the thing that stands out is that when the guilds first came out, I was spamming the guild quests all the time. You know, you get in there with like a stack of three or something, you can get like the main ones done too. But then over time, it's happened a little bit less. But whenever you see these new voice lines come out, that's when I want to start getting back yeah. in and playing it some more. I always forget to click the claim weekly reward button and stuff right. like that. I, always, I literally always forget to click it. So I never get to actually do as many. Oh, they're still having trouble, I guess, to get back in. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, there's something else that's that's going on right now. We'll probably hear in just a couple of minutes from the admin as to yeah. what it is that's going on. Can, can you talk to me real quickly about like mid slightly and like what the sort of timings will be? Is like, do you think that the rotations will come on in for those uh, supports to try and defend stuff or to get for the runes? Uh, I Sox is definitely going to check rune and. I think Katomi would probably... Yeah, he's probably going to be... I think we're going to see a lot of contested runes. I think this front lane is very farm-heavy between the two of them, the Pang on the Ember. Right. Maybe if there's a point early picked up in Chains, which I don't know if we will see from Storm Summer, maybe we'll see an Akil attempt onto the Pango, but I think for the most part, this will don't just be farm. Guys, don't give up, guys. Okay. He disconnected. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is so funny. What is that team even from? I, actually, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, that look, I, don't, I don't even know. I feel like I might have seen don't that team guys, name before in Southeast Asia, one of them, but I, I can't quite remember. Regardless, don't give up, guys. Don't mm -hmm. give up. They're going to get back into this game shortly. This is where both teams get to talk about all like little nuances of how to like prepare for the laning phase and stuff like right. that, too. So I'm already seeing... I was waiting for them to queue it up down bottom, but raindrops... I saw Fishman had it queued up right at the start. <gasps> Watson now has it queued up, so they're going to bring lots of raindrops to endure the Soul Assumption spammers. Snaking has said go. Are we good? Dun 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 dun! We're golden. Dota 2 is gonna be played. All you Sweet. fine Dota fans out there. Good stuff. And the Zai J is dropping. The, the, the inevitability of Zai J. Yeah. No matter where you go, he's gonna be there smiling at you. It is everywhere. And some of the tips coming out. So, yeah, back into it. Stormstormer again, bully nine here. And Courier. Gain a bunch of denies. Do they find one? Oh, he gets, he gets lifted and thrown yeah. away. Good save. Oh. Will he get the money creep? Oh, he will. He got it. He secured it in the flag rare. Well, TB now having a creep wave come into him a little bit here. Uh, but you can see definitely getting hampered slightly. Mm. Kind of bullied around a little bit by that visage. Yeah. Whenever the Ricky moves, he's perhaps trying to step up for some CS. They actually get the side pull off. This is kind of a big deal down bottom. So it's going to be tough for them to actually walk up and pressure that one. Soxa focusing on the denies. So how much does it matter Watson having a good start to his game? Like, obviously, this is a hero that can catch up in the jungle, but, well, I'll have to hold that thought as 33 is getting pummeled back. Fishman looking for that pull. Fishman stepped up very far. And goes for it. A couple more hits is all that they need, but the Grave Chill in the runaway. And now Fishman, he has gone way too far, gets punished again. I was gonna I'm, I was gonna say it's pretty important in my opinion for the Terra, Terra Blade to have a good start, because otherwise he's gonna be he's kinda countered with the Pango last pick, where the big burst damage is gonna happen. And I think if they get to the point where he's just constantly jungling, I think the game is going to become quite difficult. Map will shrink quite quickly versus this Visage. So, yeah, I think he has to, you know, has to have this good laning start. Right now, it's okay, but you see his counterpart doing a little bit better. And yeah, they're just disrupting the farm. They're constantly pulling back. That was meta used for them to try to get a kill, and they actually end up losing Fishman because he walks up the tower. And, I mean, you can see the value there of that, you know, in the dive under tower that happens, thinking they can get the kill. The two points in Grave Chill means he just couldn't get that attack speed off in time. It was way too much. And there is a crazy amount of damage that's coming in between this Ricky and this Visage. This Fishman constantly has to just be careful how far he steps up. He's got Raindrop now, so quite a bit tankier, but... Not securing that much CS for his Terror Blade. While we do see Skitter, Skitter on the other side, he's absolute free farm. Right. To be expected, though. When he's playing versus a DP and a Tiny, they have no way to really pose any kill threat onto him, so... He's gonna be off to a good start. And Toby kept on me just trying to play around this area, but you step up for a second and suddenly a couple of heroes on top of you get to the last word, the arcane curse. Toby silence, taking damage, and well, Snaking just shrugs it all off. That ghost creep actually turning onto Entity, mostly there, was hitting him constantly. The build clean up the pull. Well, for Tundra, getting what they want out of the laning stage. And Entity gonna need to come up with some more solutions in the mid game, it feels like, or potentially some of those rotations, like we talked about. Yeah. Soxa drops the cloud down, tries to step away, a miss there onto him from the TB. And he's perfectly fine. I think Stormstormer is going to be the one to watch for that is Toby. Skitter also dropping somewhat low the turn, but yeah, he had stick charges. He was perfectly fine. Yep. Stormstormer's hit six. He actually forced nine back to base. So 36 and seven. This mid pick is looking really nice for the start of the game. Toss back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back behind the tower. 
Skitter is fine after Katomi taking some damage. Jeez. A lot of pressure on these side lanes. 33. Been left alone a second. It's gone on yet again. Pulls back, but he will also walk away. Power rune. It's going to be a regen top. Stormstormer is going to get it. Nine can't get there in time. Already used the swash. Nicely done from Stormstormer. Yeah, this is the type of start that you would definitely want for the Ember, and it's kind of feeling like the saving grace of the laning stage in a way. Yeah, he's playing versus like very limited stuns, sure. There's going to be the silence that comes out in the mid game from the you know, Ricky plus the global. But besides that, a lot of you know, a lot of stuns that he can play around. The CK stun, very telegraphed, rolling thunder, you have ways to play around it too. So yeah, we'll have to see how much Stormstormer is going to do to make that space for Watson. And in spite of how much we were talking about, you know, the Terrorblade kind of being hampered a little bit, it was mainly just the Rubik getting kind of bullied down there. And you can look at the net worth right now. Terrorblade's not doing terribly at all. No. 500 behind the CK, but he's in, he's playing versus a pressure lane, while the CK isn't really playing versus that lane pressure lane. So, yeah, all things considered, pretty good. Stormer Remnant's in now. Finds so nine. See if he can bait out some type of a reaction. A Remnant used again. There's uh -oh. the stick charges now completely in too far and gets punished incredibly hard. He got baited. That was 20 wand on nine, just baiting him under the tower. And he's calling for it. He's telling both of his supports, get ready. He's getting ready. He's getting into the dive. So yeah, a bit overzealous there. And that completely swings everything. So he was having that amazing time mid. Now nine has completely caught up to him. Oh, a really big turnaround kill and supports getting involved in it. And then the other thing you're seeing is that in that timing, there really wasn't that much pressure put on the off laners or the safe lane to try and like get a, a counterplay with no supports in the lane. No. 33 has gone for a little bit of different build than usual on the Visage. Instead of going for like the Bassy and stuff like that, he usually starts. He has Boots plus Blades. So Boots will let him just distance himself nicely. And yeah, he was careful. He sat right back. He's going to still go for this Vlad's build. Lots of damage, Stormstormer. He has no remnants. Yeah, he's playing a little bit safe there. So you keep your eyes on this one. Eight minutes in, three to zero. Uh, Entity do still hold the slight net worth lead. It's nothing really to write home about, but you can see that at least they're keeping it close. And the big question that I'm sort of going to be looking at is what happens around these big ulti usages, both yeah. with, you know, meta, the quote, ulti, and, of course, Exorcism as the tossback comes out. Toby now finds Snake King, wants to run him down. Two-second stun. Skitter able to get that separation to keep Snake King alive and then just runs away. That's two siphon charges used. Snake King will be able to survive, and now swinging toward mid. This tower is dropping kind of low. That's a good point. After HP on it. Yeah. Goes again. It's here. Gets caught. Has the toss. Toby still on him, trying to do what damage they can. Another round of the wand charges, and Skitter gets away. And now the turn on to Snake King. Everything's been used. They can't really chase him down either. Nine, nine's making the move down bottom, though. He's got Rolling Thunder. They want to push They want to push TB out of lane here. Visage also hitting level six. I think Watson might have to just bail out of here. I don't know if they saw the rotation just yet from nine, though. He's trying to play behind his illusions to get just a little bit of extra farm. There is a Ember illusion sent down, though, and that spots that he's here. So they know that he's in the area. They do. They have TP. They have TPs at the ready if there's a dive that comes out from nine. Nine. Sniper courier. courier. Yeah, 33 now, starting to hunt with birds, starting to get some information. So they, they see the real Watson, and now the ping's coming out. He's sticking around. This is a scary place to be. Yeah, Watson deciding to still stay here. Nine not diving yet. Not wanting to, not thinking that he's going to be able to find kills. And so just cut to the wave, and, yeah. well, they chill out. Okay. Looks like they're going to play to control the rune instead. Watson, I like the build that he's gone for here. He's actually endured it. Usually you don't see a Terrorblade able to stay in lane at this point in 10 minutes. He's actually been able to stay here the whole time. Level 7, Treads, Falcon Blade. He's actually kind of tanky. Yeah. And for a Terror Blade, you know. He's got 1,000 HP on Edgy Treads with Raindrop, so not easy to bring down. Yeah, the Falcon Blade, very, very cool. Yep. And, well, you've seen a couple of these moves around. Watson going to try and farm out the jungle as 33 contests him slightly. Um, but also, Stormstormer has a DD on the Ember now done. Okay. That could be a big one for the moves. Well, a cool start to the game. Very even, not many kills. And the thing that I find interesting about it is that in a lot of these Tundra games, we end up in the situation where we're looking at like, you know, a 
two or three K lead at this point or something like right where they, they either win the lane super hard or start shutting down the map. Um, and I, I'm curious as Toby pops the exorcism, if, if maybe Entity can take that front foot. They're playing a lot of pressure on multiple fronts and this is just space. Watson now has nobody laning versus in bottom. The Dream for a Terrorblade. They're hitting top tower and now they're hitting mid, Stormstormer. Soxa sticks around. They have the birds nearby, remnants through to get away. 33 makes the move over to keep this tower alive. But to be honest, with the catapult going, good grave chill, it still gets one more punch off. The tower is almost dead. Yeah, really good moves. Uh, this is a dream start, really, for the side of Entity, it feels like. Watson just has been able to play lane fully. He's level 8 on a Terror Blade already. And he's going for fighting items. So I like this. Yeah, Falcon Blade going for Dragon Lance first. He's going to be able to turn up Tanky and perhaps endure that big burst damage that's going to be coming out from Pango and Visage. Pretty damn good for so far for, for the side of Entity. Tundra, I don't think they're like too upset with the way that these lanes went, but yeah, I think Entity's very happy when they're able to get with it, get away with the TB lane. And it is going to be Vlad's done now in that TB lane for the Visage. Yeah. And Storm Stormer takes some harassment there from Snay. Rune, is it going to be down bottom? It is, and well, uh -oh. Storm Stormer gets it, but Soxa right on top of him. Getting a couple punches, doesn't want to chase for any more, but he is able to bait out use of that arcane at least. Ooh, a nice steal. Smoke screen stolen there from Fishman. This could actually cause problems, in particular for the Pango. They're able to get a setup onto him. Root. Get the root. Pull back into the cloud that was stolen. Sox in trouble, getting burned down, and the remnant forward. Finish him off. So Entity on the board now, finally with a kill. Cost him two sentries, but well worth it. Now we see the move. Nine and snaking. We've got Global Online. Probably going to look for Watson here. Is he going to be able to get himself away? He's doing a great job scouting with his illusions constantly. Has a 19 stick. Really hard to bring down this TB, particularly with Sunder available. Yep. And, I mean, they make this move, but nothing really gained, oh. it feels like, yet. And yeah, Watson's away. He's farming in the jungle. Good awareness. And now mid tower. It's been left. So easy grab there for Storm, Stormer, and Katomi. Katomi will take it himself. So I'll get closer and closer toward the lane. So far, so good. Now looking to make an aggressive move, try to shut down Skeeter and use the next exorcism on the tower. Oh, and you can see this. Soxa walks right by. I don't know if he saw that smoke. I don't think so. I don't so. think so. And so you're going to feel much more safe right now as Skitter than you actually are. Katomi catches sight of him, I think, but... They got a scan. Yeah, and that, that's going to signal, okay, time to back out. So well played by Skitter to dodge that one. But now Tower. I mean, Toby can just walk up with Exorcism. Top Tower should be able to get dropped down from him. So far, Entity. Some good pressure on the map. Now is where the pesky Ricky starts to just snipe couriers. And I think for Tundra, it's wait till 15 minutes before they use a huge play because they want to get the Ricky shard online. Soxa here. Like, what is he? He's just blocking Radiant's out camps. Yeah, Th this is really cool. He's just he's blocking camps with sentries and with his body, and then he's probably just gonna go for stealing last hits as well from the TV. It's really annoying. Pulls him over. That's <laughs> <laughs> got him. <laughs> got the courier. Got the last hit. Now Watson's gotta be pissed. I mean, it's like really annoying economic damage because you look yeah. across all those camps. There's sentry wards in all of them in the Ancients, in that triangle, all the areas where they would want to farm right now is kind of being blocked out mm -hmm. or taken away. And we've got the item back. I'm not going to say an interesting one, but Wraith Pact, it's back on 33 this game. We'll find snaking. Stormstormer gets hit. And, well, it looks like the move towards mid means 33 is going to get some retribution, taking down another tower. Katomi could go for the deny, but can't quite get there in time. Tumblr's toy to the low ground. So Tundra, you know, they're they're being super annoying. Yeah, this is tep I mean typical Tundra, right? Economical damage constantly, and they're gonna have Wraith Pact now at all points in the game to deal with this Terror Blade's damage. If he doesn't deal with it early, it could just make him could just make him a lot weaker than I think he expects to be. But still, I I'm still just watching Watson top of net worth as this Terror Blade yeah. farming very safe. What a difference in game! I think we had like 25 kills last game at this point. It's two to three. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very farm heavy, very economical game. Yeah, it's basically the, the Tundra classic. You know, they, they win without, uh, you know, that much happening. And in this game, there's not much happening. And they're sort of staying even, it feels like. Yeah. And now the shard is online. So I think now Tundra, they're going to look to start putting a bit more pressure onto the map. Soxa, Courier is going to be delivering it very soon. Nine also has the Fusal Blade finish. So yeah, I think they, they start, they're going to start wanting to get some type of aggressive plays. 
can they though? Seems like Entity, they're reading all the moves. Stolen, rooted, Jason, damage, the turn is there. Stormstormer taking some hits and now in the cloud in a little bit more trouble. Able to get out of that one, still looks for some more Watson in the area. They find Soxa, get the toss, pulls Toby in pretty freaking far. Toby are right on top of him. Do they have enough to kill him off? No, they have to run some more. That's a meta used. Kazumi tries to chase this, and Stormstormer also on top of it. Really good bird stuns, though. And now the turn on the Stormstormer, pulling him back in. But the Sunder, nice Sunder. Watson, keeping his buddy alive, takes some damage for it. But he slept for a bit, and Stormstormer, another round of the slight. The damage bringing him low. Stormstormer oh. barely surviving. A couple more hits is all it's going to take, and he goes down. Avalanche, but they keep alive everybody. Tundra, dude, the way they team fight is just insanely good. Fishman is gonna fall. Tundra, they get out of harm's way and find a couple kills on the retreat. They knew exactly how to play this fight. This this defusal, the mana burn from them resetting. The initial go, it's a little awkward, but then they actually force Entity to overcommit and 33, as you mentioned, if these burn stuns causes such a big problem. Katomi. He gets the kill, but it comes at a cost as the rest of the team running him down. The birds are there. Snaking another plus two for him. First one. Okay. <laughs> I think it was just out of range of the earlier one. So. Got it. But I yeah. guess that's the downside to low kills. Yes. Low kills, low int. But either way, I mean, I, that was the meta used. He tried to chase them, and they just perfectly reset. I Tundra know how to take these type of fights. Kiting them away and putting them into a weird spot. And we mentioned, I know Panel talked about it a bunch, is looking at these early exorcisms and stuff like that. Toby's gotten one successful one up top, but a little difficult for him to run in because of the way that Tundra just has to reset and pull away from fights, be it the you know the drop birds to kite. And, uh oh, Stormstormer. Big no man's land. Oh, Two so seconds deep. stun. He's gone. Uh oh. Did not stand a chance there. Yeah, he's going to need to get into that BKB ASAP. That's, I mean, very problematic. They're going to probably lose tower. No meta, doesn't want to look to fight. And... Uh-oh. I mean, th there's even other little things that I'm seeing. Like, with, well, as nine gets away, like Watson running around trying to, like, get farm in the map. He just had to run through his triangle. There's nothing for him to farm there. Now Toby's here farming up what else was left. He's, there's no, there's there's no creeps. Nothing. There's, there's just no creeps for him to farm. It, it's like the beginning before another round of spells even spawn and they get the kill onto Fishman. Watson feels like he has to show up to fight because there's nothing else for him to do right now. And Tundra, they're just playing oppressively. They're taking away all the resources from Entity. They are. Sp I mean, this is such such an annoying way to play for <laughs> Look at him. Like, Watson doesn't know where to go. He's got no Ancients. He's got no hard camp. He's got no other hard camp. Root into sleep, sinking on top of him. Uh oh. He's dead again. The chase down is there. They have all the damage in the world. Even Greaves aren't enough to keep him alive. Toby in the area there. I, this is just, yeah. Tundra, Tundra magic. Dude. This is them playing into Greaves before they have their own Greaves. Dude. And Anthony can't take fights. And Watson, he's just walking and he's like, there's no camps. Uh, he, I can't farm. He, he he walked in a circle waiting for the minute mark to spawn the camps and then none of them showed up. Oh my God. It feels so bad to be a terrible there. He's still top net worth, but like, look at this gold disparity. Yep. Like now they're having, now they're finding the sentry, but it went almost full duration. And there's still one in a hard camp and there's still one in another hard camp. I mean, Soxa is playing so annoying as this Ricky. Now another tower. I, they're really kicking the pace up. Entity, they're in some trouble here. 33 moves on in. Skitter pops the ulti. Sleeping Fishman. Dart finds him. I, I mean, they're just getting ripped to shreds. They, they need to find something here. Stone 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 dodges some of the damage. Two second stun still there. Tries to kill off the Wraith Pack. It's gone. Can they fight this one now? Toby jumps in. Has he gone too far oh, though? God. The sleep is there. No spirit siphons get a chance to do anything. And Entity, they lose the DP and are gonna lose a tier two tower. That was a five second duration on a exorcism. Tundra, yeah, they've, it seems like they figured it out. They figured out exactly how to play versus this draft. They're like, it's too slow. Stormstormer with these, honestly, his, his, his deaths are really painful. It, he's been slowed down so much. Four deaths on Stormstormer in this game. Mm. Look at his mana pool too. It's actually pretty low. Snaking still stolen like what? I think maybe even top like six three rounds. Uh, or yeah, something? I think six int has been taken away from this ember. So I think she barely even has mana for all of his spells. 
No, it's 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 a really rough one. And and Tundra, just the way that they're playing, like, dude, look at the bottom half of the map. It's, it's just all sentries blocking everything. Ah, this is beautiful game plan, really, from them. And Anthony's trying to get out, but they can't find anything. Everyone on Tundra just walks away. Soxa drops down a sentry, gets the sleep. Oh, gets God. the cloud, the roll in, and the global. Guess what? It's back up. Katomi gonna get beaten to death as nine keeps looking for more. Falls off the charge, gets some more hits out with that diffusal blade. Good lord. Their poke and prod is just yeah, it's terrifying the way they reset fights too. And now 33 after Wraith Pact, he's got Greaves done. So he has way surpassed his counterpart. Roche has opened up. Entity starting to feel like they don't really have ways to take fights almost at this point anymore. They're going to have to have hope. Hopes and dreams there for Watson to try to be able to bring this game back for them, but it's starting to feel almost impossible for him. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, with Tundra leaving that side of the map alone, Watson's able to get some farm for himself, but it comes at the cost, like you're talking about, of Roche now yeah. uh, being online. They do find Soxu heads into just a little sentry uh -oh. ward there, pulls who? back in, and... Okay, Cloud down, stolen sleeping dart. Maybe a chance there. Soxa gets brought down low, gets Storm killed Stormer. off, but Storm Stormer dead. Watson does have meta out. Let's get her right on top of him. Nine, bullying, punching, trying to kill him off in time. Does he have enough time to get a Sunder off? No. Nope. The full control is there. Toby turns the damage out from Storm Stormer off that buyback. Maybe he can do something Toby. here, but no. Toby is going to die again. Fishman just walking into his death. Skinner doing way too much damage, and Soxa eyes on Katomi, who is going to be brought down yet again. Nine on top of him with the sleep, and then just pops on his head like a Goomba. Holy moly. They can't team fight. They're just getting literally decimated every single time. The kites, the control. Watson doesn't get to do anything. He pops meta, and he's just running immediately. They just get right on top of him. Yeah, this is incredibly impressive. That was a buyback from Stormstormer, and could do pretty much nothing with it. God. And he lost more int as well. Looking at this. Yeah, <laughs> that's two rounds of int going down there. Oh, poor guy. Really, really rough. And you can see that the power of the BKB done on this Chaos Knight turns his eyes onto Watson. And just look at the control. The roll up, the roll back, the push away, the stun from CK, the bird drops. It's just all there. And in this moment where it looks like it has turned it all around again, just walk away. <laughs> yeah. The amount of damage that they're able to do, the amount of like, control and damage oh. that they're able to do is, oh no, Storm Stormer again. Nothing, no mana, nine, just trying to whittle him away. Pop stick charges, but can't remnant. Oh. He's got no mana. He's got no int, and he's got no mana from the defusal. Dead for 60 seconds after this dieback. Tundra. Yeah, they're so oppressive. And yeah, I mean, huge highlights really for how obnoxious Sox is being. These sentries are just devastating. And I think that there's something too to the idea of like, when a lot of those camps are blocked out by the Ricky, it forces these other heroes that aren't Terrorblade into uncomfortable positions. Like, we saw Stormstormer all the way across the map trying to farm out dire jungle, and it's because there was nowhere else for him to go, it yeah. felt like. Just really good play coming in from Tundra, knowing how to push their buttons. And recognizing how to just ruin Stormstormer's life. This was the last pick, Ember. It was into a Ricky, it was into a Silencer, and I think they're, they're maybe regretting some of the moves that they've done with him. Over extensions, I think two times, and he's just been severely punished. Bare, like, he barely has mana to use his spells, and had to buy back and then dies anyway, so... Tundra, full control of the map. Now Watson stuck in the base. Well, Tier 3 tower starts to get hit, Tundra. Very happy to at least mount a little bit of an offensive here. Uh, 33 ticks the, took the 15 talent, so now oh. he's got the armor corruption. So tower is dropping pretty quick. Dude, that dropped so fast. Holy moly. Pop the glyph here, but they've got stone for him to drop down. Gets the stun on it too. And I'm assuming he has the resummon ready also if they wanted to all in the birds, but he can keep him alive. Yep, yeah, he's just fine. Tower's dead. Yeah, I love it. We see a lot of people, like, it's it varies which talent you do take, but this time around, yeah, 33, he's making the armor corruption really work out for the tower push. He's the, he's kind of the sieging on this, the sieger on this team when he has CK and Pang also. It does make sense, but... It reminds me of, like, the SF15 talent choice, right? Yeah. Where it's the same type of thing of, like, okay, you want to end the game right now? Let's just go in for the armor corruption, take those buildings. Yeah, it's been nerfed. That's why I saw, like, some people have opted to take the Soul Assumption hits two targets, but yeah, this game... You can definitely see why he's wanted to go for that. Is 
Yeah, Entity trapped in the base, and we're already seeing now more and more itemization to just shut down. They're like, okay, Ember has no game, Death Prophet has no game, TB's the only one that's kind of doing relatively decent, and now they're going to full itemize to counter that Terror Blade. Nine buys a Maelstrom. Used to see a lot more on the Pangos, but now you can, under, you know, versus TB, you really understand why, and they're, yeah, just really looking to shut him down. I mean, it's a really cool idea. I like the thing that you talked about there also of, like, a little bit earlier, the Silencer paired together with the Diffuser Blade on Pango, because yeah. it's like, you have a limited mana pool to begin with, and then you make it even worse. It's like really cool ideas of how to, you know, do it, and also one of the mechanics that makes people the most angry in Dota, yeah. <laughs> just take away all their abilities to do anything. You literally get hit by one swash, and you actually have no, you have no int, so your mana pool is that much lower that it just makes it feel that much worse. It's, look at the scaling, look at the supports on Tundra now. They're oh, soon man. to be overtaking the Ember Spirit too. Snaking actually bought Shard, something you don't see too much on Silencers. Okay. Um, more int stole. <laughs> so, I mean, if he kills the Ember <laughs> once or twice more, like, literally Stormstorm is not going to have full spells. It's got 46 int right now. Yeah. Um, that could be pretty freaking rough. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I guess the other thing, too, is that, like, you know, those glaives getting a little bit of silence there. Yes. It, I think it really does catch people off guard, that fourth hit silence. Radiant are scanning. Another way to mess with the ability to cast these spells. Stormstormer still has no BKB. I mean, he's just going to get darted and smoke screened. This is not an easy situation. Can they catch nine? They do have a ward down. They might be able to get him. This is a big kill. They, global. They need, the global comes out immediately. Backs away. Trying to wait it out. Nine, the roll up, the roll away, but the damage is done. They find themselves a kill. Tundra, they're on the back foot now, terrified. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Probably not. It's a meta used, and they do get that one kill, but can they turn it into anything else? The positioning of the map says definitely not. The top's pushing in, mid's pushing in. Look at the ward coverage. I mean, Tundra have had, yeah, next level wards this game, really. Wards in all three lanes, so they'll see everybody that comes out. Plus, they've been blocking all the camps constantly. Economical damage. Yeah, we can see him to strike even more fear into him. It's Storm coming. Stormstormer almost BKB. I mean, he needs it so badly to be able to do anything in the fights. Breaks a smoke there. Think for a moment. Skitter socks in nearby each other. And looks like they can just get a little bit of the way into their base to keep themselves alive. Katomi? Katomi? Ooh. Ooh. Blink back. Well done. So they dodge the gank coming in. They're going to get dewarded here. So even what limited vision they found on the map, Entity now going to have that denied from them. BKB is finished through Stormstormer. He can start to play a little more aggressively. I am even with BKB, though, has to be careful. He gets hit by one swash. Might not even have mana to pop the BKB, so. Oh my god, you're right. He still has to be careful. He just has his mana pool is just so much lower than usual. Well. Wow. They're getting into the split push territory that we knew eventually could come out if the game didn't go the way that Entity wanted it to. Yeah. And now Soxa hunting through the trees, trying to find them off to the side. If somebody gets sleeping darted, it feels likely that they'll be brought down. Yeah, definitely. Um, They're farming just so much on the three cores. Watson's still at the top, yeah. but not really seeing the easiest ways for him to get into these fights at all. Especially with 33, he's about to have an AC done. So everyone's going to be that much tankier. God, he is a monster. And yeah. that Wraith pack too, right? Like It's caused a lot of problems, the item build. It, it, it is seriously a ton of damage reduction still. Mm -hmm. And, well, they at least have some heroes that can kind of like get a couple punches on there, we saw. Uh, the DP found it. Maybe even Rubik can give up his life for one extra hit to try and take it down. And then Watson can do the damage. But it's not easy. No. They're trapped in the base again. Tundra, the way that they play around the map, the efficiency. And they're just going to keep scaling on three heroes, and you're scaling only on one. Game feels very difficult. Actually, sorry. They're scaling on four, on four heroes, because snaking always farms extremely hard as well, too. So they're scaling on four heroes, and yeah, you're only scaling on the one. Yeah, I wonder what he goes for. I mean, with this Philly back there, he's just going to keep on getting bigger and bigger, too. I'd like if he could use the Refresher. I mean, it's very long ways down the line or anything like that, but, yeah. I mean, he's going to eventually be able to get that much farm. So, I mean, right now his build's perfect. I mean, maybe he just goes teamfight items on him, so he could just still go Boots of the Bearing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's level 15, having a really good game on all of Tundra. Well, Roche going to respawn in two minutes here, and uh, relatively... 
you know, middle of the road-ish timing for it. Uh, we'll see if Entity can decide to come out and try and take a fight before that moment comes out, or if they're just going to sort of play that defensive style as Agon and Scepter so and AC Dunn. Holy moly, they're big. Almost level 20 also on 9. So everything is, like we were saying, everything is now being built to counteract terribly, because he's the only one who's actually getting to play any type of Dota. And feels like he's going to be the only one who's going to be able to do anything in these fights. Is, yeah, just full counter him. So that's going to be the name of the game. Radiant Toby Oscar. trying to get towards the Lotus Orb for himself. Whew. It feels like he needs BKB too. Right. It, I mean, it just feels like they need so much really at this point after the, all this deficit that's happened. So he's going to commit. See if they can look to take a fight. Scotty's done. Lotus is done. BKB's done on the Ember too. See, can Entity do anything this time versus Tundra with this? Do you feel like for Entity, they have to find like a toss back play to, to win a fight or something like that? Like, is there any hope at all if it's sort of in the open field of, of, of taking a fight, like say around Roche or something? It feels very difficult because they there's so many different things they have to deal with. It's like they got to shut down the Pango, but then there's going to be a global that comes in. It's it's just not easy for them to take any type of fight at this deficit. Okay. And they're always playing versus Toxa, who not only has the shard that we talked about, of course, earlier, but Psychic Headband and Lens. So let's see that uh, Sleeping Dark cast range. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it's it's the whole screen. So. <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell? Yeah. So it's it's super impressive. Dude, that is awesome. I, I love that build. Soxa, it, he's, it's super interesting to me, right? Because obviously four player, but he gives so much farm over to Snaking there to the side. You know what I mean? And like... I don't know if it's willingly gives the farm. Okay, I mean, all Snaking's right. just super greedy, but fair. <laughs> it works out for them, so why not, right? Yeah, true enough. DD Skitter. Oh, is it time? They want to fight. I mean, they're ready to fight for sure. Lincoln's done. Gem on 33. 33's about to hit 18 as well, too. Skitter, he's just walking in. But the lift. And then the runaway. Oops. Silence out. Storm uh, Stormer has lost all of his mana. Okay. Yes, the TP home. And Roche, it's up. 33, as you said, about to level 18 also, so his birds are going to be damage strong. This is going to drop so fast. Dude. I don't think they make it in time. They, they're trying to run over, and Storm Stormer throws out a remnant behind. Can go for the slight play, but the sleeping dart there takes off immediately with the Lotus, but now the roll back and forth. Stolen, Stolen. roll, okay. okay. Fish man, can he do it? Turns now on to Skitter. Stormstormer, super low on HP, but still has a lot of mana. Toby turned upon, has the Spirit Siphons, trying to survive through it. Nope. Skitter being dropped down lower and lower. Watson turns, able to find a kill. They lost Toby, they lost their Rubik, can then they find any type of fight after. Skitter flakes <laughs> it, finds the big bash, BKB out. He's just beating away at this Terrorblade. The AC, everything else used, does get the Sunder off, but even through two lives, it feels like he's not going to be able to do the damage he needs to. Godlike 33, everybody's dead. Tundra still unassailable in this one. That's it. I mean, that was the one fight they didn't even get to use Exorcism. I feel like they literally didn't get to use Exorcism once this game. They had the one push top, and then besides that, Tundra just played immaculately around it. Ah, that's that's it. Unreal. I mean, this is, one, this is definitely one of those games to look at of just like almost perfection, it feels like, from Tundra. The lanes kind of looked like relatively even, and then it, <laughs> things just exploded. I think he denied the, the Aghanim shard. Did he? Okay. Yeah, because they already have it. Everyone's got one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Well, they don't need it. 26,000 gold lead, and at 34 minutes now, uh, this is looking like just about the end, barring some miracle play by Entity, but more appropriately, some horrific plays coming out from Tundra. Yeah. Storm Stormer. Almost all of his mana gone instantly as nine. He's in. Oh my god. Dodges the stun with the ulti. Rolls back and forth. Stormstormer forced to pop the BKB. Toby's still being controlled. They all have to run away. This is going to be Megas. This is going to be the game as Tundra take it dominant. Now the question is, do they stick around a little bit longer in this one? Tries to go for Level. the toss back. They find him. Toby going to be brought down yet again. Watson trying to get away. The remnant back from Stormstormer. Watson. But Watson in far too far. Pops the BKB, wants to run at him. Gets bashed on his way away. They do have 33 here. Stormstormer on top of him. But Soxa moves on in. Drops the cloud. Katomi can't find a tossback play. GG. And GG is called. So Tundra start off slow, but then end in that sort of vice-like grip that we've seen them have. They are disgusting. All right, this game, like 15 minutes, looked even. Ricky picks up Shard. Game's impossible. Entity. <laughs>